Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can I ask that you take your seat, please? Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Gentlemen, today is the second part of our academic assembly celebrating this week the achievements from 2022 of our year five to eight students. So that's this year's year six to nine. And we welcome their parents who are along today to see their uh, sons congratulated on a fine academic achievement for semester two in 2022. Today is, of course, 2023, and there are a number of things to celebrate about this year, one of which will be the presentation of our 2023 Senior Barbecue Committee. They're very much looking forward to being officially commissioned. We'll have our usual uh, weekly update from uh, the student department and we'll hear about Fogarty House's 2023 campaign for World's Greatest Shave. As always, Nudgee College acknowledges the Turrbal people of Mianjin, the First Nations peoples and traditional custodians of these lands and waterways that they call Numji and Nada and we call Nudji. We acknowledge their ancient customs and the law of the land and we pay our respects and acknowledge all ancestors, elders and communities across this great continent and its neighbouring islands. On the theme of sharing table and sharing meal with those less fortunate than ourselves, for prayer this morning will be led by Roman de Clara. In voice and in action, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Sharing the loaves and the fishes, you gave us an image of solidarity with the hungry, O Lord. Sharing yourself in the bread and wine, you called all to your table, O Lord. Give us the hunger to be a part of the feeding and the healing of this world. Nourish us with your grace so we may work with joy to serve our sisters and brothers. Open our eyes and our hearts to recognise those in poverty and increase our awareness of structures and systems that need to be changed so we may all break bread together. In your name we pray for the end of hunger. Live Jesus in our hearts. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Mr. Fulliger, members of the CLT, and my fellow Nudgee brothers. Each year at Nudgee College, we celebrate the many sporting, academic, and community achievements of our Nudgee brothers. Equal to these achievements is the hard work and dedication of the Barbecue Committee, which started as a humble first six and has now grown to an impressive first 16. We are proud members of the Barbecue Committee for 2023, and we are excited to announce the following staff as a part of the 2023 season. Ms. Louise Nardi, head coach, who we acknowledge in our absence today. Mr. Cameron Brown, strength and conditioning coach and a long time valued customer of the value of the committee. And Mr. Stephen Mira, our patron saint. This term, we are proud to support the nine house charities in an initiative we blatantly copied from Grilled. From every purchase made, one dollar will be given to a house charity of your choice. So if you're unsure what your house charity is, we recommend finding out. The results from the past two weeks can now be seen on the screens, with Tierney and the Royal Flying Doctors currently taking the lead with $69 raised. You can find us every Thursday lunchtime in the Edmund Rice Mall, and we are confident our cooking skills will only, only continue to improve as the season progresses. I'd now like to invite Mr. Mira to the and Mr. Brown to the stage to present the aprons. Would Mr. Fulliger also join us for this momentous occasion? <laughs> In the
In the absence of the Barbecue Committee's head coach, Ms Nardi, today, it is my great honour to present to you the 2023 Senior Barbecue Committee and to have Mr Brown and Mr Fulliger present them with their aprons. Kyle Brady. James Boytle. Roman De Clara. Jack Ball. Clint Blinnerhassett. Xavier Collins. Xavier Farrell. Tom Hansen. Billy Richardson. Patrick Snell. Blake Turner. Harry Wright. Henry Christopherson. William Boddington. Ned Clark. And Scott Lightbody. True to form of the barbecue committee, they can't count. <laughs> Scotty, I've got a spare one down under the table for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 Senior Barbecue Committee. We're the crew that can um, help you see them, miss. I think you are absolutely the crew. This is the absolute cream of the crop. You are the crew who we're, we're all going to see the golden time for the end of the season. Now the team stays on board to land down range. Both teams meet in the middle. Remember, you want the sun alive. This is Struggle. Struggle. Congratulations to all those gentlemen. That's a tough act to follow. Good morning, Mr. Fulliger, members of the CLT, colleagues, parents and special guests, and importantly, men of St. Joseph's Nudgee College, both here and our Ross boys in Tierney Auditorium. It's my honour this morning to set the scene for our second academic assembly that will recognise the achievements of our current year six, seven, eight and nine students. Before I call to the stage those who will commence the ceremony and the presentation of our gold, silver and bronze awardees, I would like to reiterate and add to some of the messages you've heard about the year that, the, uh, that lays ahead of you with regards to your learning journey. Our principal, Mr Fulliger, last week spoke about Tom Robertson, our 2022 Ducks, and that achieving such an award is the pinnacle at Nudgee College. You all have so many opportunities to contribute and achieve 
but it is what you do in the class from Monday to Friday that is your core business. Learning and learning to the best of your ability is the most important responsibility you have at this school. There are many other important elements of life as a nudgy man, but learning is key. Mr. Sepetos, our Dean of Learning and Teaching, shared with you all this slide two weeks ago. He spoke of being a lighthouse for learning and presented a number of points that highlight how you can be a lighthouse for learning. I'd like you to take a moment now to reflect on the five points that you see up there and consider how well you've lived up to those expectations in the past fortnight. And so without diminishing the importance of each of the five points, I wish to share with you a brief story about the first point, sail your own ship. If ever you come into my office, you'll see adorned on my walls a number of lovely pieces of art. The one you see here is from my 86-year-old mother-in-law, who, late in life, decided she wanted to be an artist. And now she's an accomplished and, and well-sought-after painter. One day, she decided to paint a picture of the vista that is viewed from one of my favourite riding loops in northern New South Wales and simply just present it to me. So that's gone with me wherever I've worked. Another piece of art is a depiction of the road to Emmaus, a powerful piece of scripture where Jesus walks with two disciples following his death and resurrection without either of those disciples recognising who he is. It's painted by a Dutch artist named Janet Brooks Gerlock. The third piece that I wish to talk about today may be seen by many as simply a photo and not a piece of art. I, however, see it as, a beautiful, art, as beautiful art, and the image depicts one of my favourite pastimes. The photo is of a Tahitian surfer by the name of Michelle Berez inside a beautiful chopu barrel with the lip of the wave framing not only the surfer, wave shoulder, channel and reef, but the, but the imposing and beautiful landscape that butts up against the tropical island ocean. The shot is incredible, but the story behind it is even more intriguing. Leroy Bellet from southern New South Wales, the southern New South Wales coast is now a 24-year-old surf photographer. As a 16-year-old young man and wanting to capture angles of surfers not ever captured before, Leroy embarked on a journey to become a highly competent big wave surfer who would take photos of surfers from deeper within the barrel than featured surfers. As you can see by this image, Leroy is way behind the surfer who is trying to make it out of the wave. If you know anything about this wave, it's, it's a death-defying wave in Tahiti. Leroy, in trying to capture the image, has basically no chance of making the wave, meaning he's pounded to within an inch of his life to get the shot. He's dragged across rock shelves and reefs, pulled and pushed in every direction all at once, and the whole time this is occurring while underwater, he struggles to remain conscious due to lack of oxygen. Prior to this, many had dreamed of shooting from this position, but no one had done it. This young man is definitely not afraid of chasing his passion and dream. He had to learn how to reach the top, and his results are breathtaking, as you can see. He's forged his own path, sailed his own ship on his learning journey, and in doing so, become a world leader in his chosen field. He has reached the pinnacle the image featured widely, uh, featured widely in the surfing press and brought tremendous amount of success to him. Each of the young men we're about to honour this morning has displayed the same commitment and tenacity in achieving what they have. They have sailed their own ship on their learning journey, uh, on their learning journey and are striving for that pinnacle that they, that, that, that they aspire to. And for that, I congratulate each of them. I would now like to call Mr. Chris Corley, Director of Junior School, forward to present our first award winners. Good morning, Mr. Fulliker, members of the college leadership team, staff, our parents here today, and of course, gentlemen of Nudgee. It is my pleasure to commence the presentation of gold, silver, and bronze academic awards to years five to eight. I see Mr. Fulliker's already here. These results are based on semester two, 2022, and are used to determine today's winners. For a bronze award, it was A's in all subjects but three. 
silver A in all subjects but two, and the gold award A in all subjects but one. Can we please hold our applause till the end of each group? In year five, the bronze award recipients are Finn Andrews, Tom Eagles, Mitchell Halpin, Cooper Henderson, Jack Hilton, Eli Hodges, Vaughan Jenkinson, Cormac McQuire, Paddy Mullins, Diesel Piper. Can we please congratulate our Year 5 bronze recipients? <laughs> year 5 silver award recipients are Ollie Drum, Sebastian Gynitz, Miguel King Scott, James Manning. Evan Monaghan, George Monfries, Genève Patel, Hayden Rice, Archie Stoneman, Jack Wilkins, and Will Zillman, who is absent today. Can we please congratulate our Year 5 Silver recipients? <laughs> year 5 Gold Award recipients are Matthias Beckers, Will Campbell, who is absent today, Dion Jewic, Sam Hall, Nate Moore, Stephen Minio, George Mitchell, Charlie Smith, Jack Strahorn, Max Watson and Xavier Whisker. Can we please congratulate our Year 5 gold medalists? I now welcome Studies Prefect Oliver Keel to the stage to present Year 6. Good morning, Mr. Fulliger, special guests, parents, staff, and men of Nudgee. It's my pleasure to present the academic awards to students in year six. Please hold your applause until the end. In year six, the bronze award recipients are Marcus Grehan, Duke Moher, Angus O'Connor, Harry Orr, Charlie Takachik, Hamish Tucker, absent. Zach Zillman, absent. who is absent today. Please congratulate these award recipients. In year six, the silver award recipients are Lucas Cameron, Henry Dallymore, Noah Doxey, Liam Kent, Patrick McEwen, Rahul Padmanabhan,
Can we please congratulate our Year 6 silver medalists? In Year 6, the Gold Award recipients are Joshua Andrews, Spencer Blake, Thomas Carroll, Darcy Cotter, Ethan Dahl, Abhay Diwali, William Heaton, Hugo Jobba, Flynn McDarmon, Ashley Overs, Scott Sebra, Oxton Seedy, Kobe Weir. Can we please congratulate our Year 6 gold medalists? I would la now like to welcome fellow Studies Prefect Carter Corliss to the stage. Good morning, Mr. Fulliger, special guests, parents, staff, and men of Nudgee. It is my privilege to present the academic awards to the students in Year 7. Please hold your applause until the end. In Year 7, the, bro the bronze award recipients are Flynn Everard, Samuel Gervais, Brian McGuinness, Felix Timms, Arian Virk, and Archie Youngman. Can we please congratulate our Year 7 bronze medalists? In Year 7, the Silver Award recipients are Gayho de Geer, Tobias Grant, Caleb Popsick, and William Kisby. Can we please congratulate our Year 7 Silver Medals? In Year 7, the Gold Award recipients are Lewis Abdi, Sydney Bates, Peter Beckers, German Buller, Harper Cameron, Daniel Carey, James Carroll, Tom Chappell, Joshua Gynitz, Henry Geese, Thomas Hatter, and Liam Hughes. Can we please congratulate our first group of Year 7 gold medalists? <laughs> also receiving a gold award in Year 7 are Jaden Jalil, Alexander Jones, Harvey Kasovich, Ryan Katmi, Santiago King Scott, Sahan Lashand, Troy Lee, Edward McDonald, Kinnan McLean, James Newbecker and Dilshan Sidhu. 
Can we please congratulate our final group of Year 7 gold medalists? I would like to welcome fellow Studies Prefect Aidan Easton to the stage. Good morning, Mr. Forger, special guests, parents, staff, and men of Nudgee. It is my privilege to present the academic awards to students in Year 8. Please hold your applause until the end. In Year 8, the bronze award recipients are Jack Burden, who is absent today, Fabian Cowell, Harrison Elsley, Nate Larry, Ethan McLeod, Talis Maloney, Nakoda Murphy, Ben Sands, Ben Summers, Sam Tallon, and Jacob Webb. Can we please congratulate our Year 8 bronze medalists? In Year 8, the Silver Award recipients are William Campbell, who is absent today, Ethan Cockburn, Jeremy Deacon, Xavier Doherty, Michael Donovan, Sam Duffy, Jackson Gosney, James Gray, and Archer Jenkins. Can we please congratulate our first group Year 8 Silver Medalists? <laughs> also receiving a Silver Award in Year 8 are Roman Jones, who is absent today, Angus Kovac, Caleb Lloyd, Timothy Nash, Nicholas Phillip, Eddie Power, Anthony Roberts, Flynn Twomey, and Grady Whisker. Can we please congratulate our final group of Year 8 Silver Medals? In year eight, the gold award recipients are Ethan Andrews, Jacob Brown, William Dallymore, Andrew Emery, Matthew Fuller, who is absent today, Edward Gary, Spencer Green, Cooper Keel, and Tom Cooley. Can we please congratulate our first group of Year 8 Silver Medalists? <laughs> also receiving a gold award in Year 8 are Max Lazzarini, Brody Martin, Harrison McIver, Vincent Maravecca, Jeremy Pius, George Pentecost, Elfie Piper, who is absent today, and Baxter Widdervine. Can we please congratulate our final group of Year 8 gold medalists?
Morning, Mr. Fulliger, members of the college leadership team, staff, of course, our wonderful parents who are here celebrating their son's awards this morning. Shout out to those in Ross House in Tierney and, of course, gents who are with us today. Child safeguarding is at the core of all that we do at Nudgee. It is and needs to continue to be part of our language and our actions every day. We are guided by the EREA child safeguarding standards, which provide us with a framework at Nudgee to continue to further enhance our culture and commitment to ensuring that we have safety, protection and care for all students at our school. Today I want to talk to you about our standard number two. Children and young people are safe, informed and participate. And there are two themes to this. Firstly, you all have the right to be safe all of the time. And gents, if I could just clarify that a little bit with you. A right is something that we own, it's something that we're born with. We don't have to earn it, and it doesn't come with conditions in relation to your safety. Your right to be safe includes free, free from physical abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, neglect, sexual abuse and exploitation. And all of, it, all of the time is obvious. It means every minute of every day, no exceptions. The second theme is about you having an option to talk to someone, no matter how big or um, difficult that problem or issue that you have. I think the important part here is this phrase, we can. And for me, that's an empowering message to you. You have a choice in this. Okay, you can be strong. You can make choices for yourself. You can make choices to not be a bystander and stand up for others. And you also know that you will be supported in these gates. The someone's important for you. And, and I hope that every single one of you has that someone who is close to them that they could talk about anything with. Is that a friend? Is it a family member? Is it a teacher? Is it one of our child protection contacts that will be on the board for you and you see in the student notices each day? And finally, the anything. No matter what happens, how difficult, how uncomfortable, you have someone that you can talk to, someone who you can rely on to have your back. By way of conclusion, I just wanted to touch on a couple of myths. Children make up stories about abuse. I think we would agree that for far too long, young people haven't been listened to. The truth is, a child or a young person rarely lies about abuse. So gents, please know that you have our ears. The second one is sometimes children or young people are to blame for their abuse. The feeling of guilt has sometimes led young people not to speak up. Again, the facts are a child is never to blame for abuse. Adults are responsible for their own behaviour. And no matter how a child behaves, adults have no right to harm a child. Gents, I hope our culture of child safeguarding encourages you to be a participant and not a bystander. Please now welcome Miladin Markovic, who will perform charades on the piano accordion.
I think, I think it's obvious from the way everyone was listening, it was almost dead silent apart from the piano chord and, and the way that you acclaim Maladin's performance, that just how outstanding that was. Congratulations, Maladin. Like this, Maladin's a good example of what we could all aspire to be because he's not only a, a musician, and I can remember from when he was here in year five, he's been dragging around various instruments throughout his year here as at Nudgy. He's also a good student. He's also a first basketball player. So a real all-round young man. So he, someone we can all aspire to, boy, to be. So boys, please put your hands together again for Maladin. Good job. <laughs> like our various other speakers today, can I welcome the parents and your presence here is really appreciated. Can I acknowledge the boys up in Tierney and Ross House, to those people who are still online and watching, uh, to the staff of the college and to the young men of Naji. Morning, men. Morning. It's been a terrific assembly today, a cross-section of things. I love the barbecue committee, uh, that we can present something like that with slight tongue-in-cheek, but a little bit of a uh, sense of humour and not taking ourselves too seriously, but acknowledging the fact that they do play a, a, an important part and a service part dimension of the school. So we wish the barbecue committee all the very, very best. Like last week, we've acknowledged the gold, silver and bronze awards winners and thanks, boys, for your patience as you've sit there and have watched over 300 boys over the past two weeks be acknowledged for their achievements in second semester last year. Could also acknowledge those boys who've been awarded over last the last two weeks. I hope that that award is both a reward for what you did last year, but also an encouragement for what you're going to do in the year ahead and really add to your determination, your focus, to continue to do really well at school here at Nudgee. You can also thank Mr Thompson, his first opportunity to speak fulsomely on assembly and to capture some of the key messages that we've heard over the last few weeks but also to put his take on those things. So Mr Thompson, thanks very, very much today for that today. My focus today is a little, a little different. I won't pick up on the learning theme today, but I do want to acknowledge a couple of, a couple of things. Areas that I think, pat on the back to nudgy boys, and perhaps in areas of less pat on the back and less room, more a message about room for improvement. So in the spirit of being authentic about who we are as a school, yes, we do some things terrifically well, but boys, we've got some areas to work on and areas that we need to be, be better on. So let's start in the positive. Boys, I couldn't have been prouder last Thursday night at the GPS Music Showcase. Mr Thompson and I were there to see the boys perform on stage in various ensembles and in the choir, and it was a terrific performance by all those young people from all the GPS schools to work and perform a concert of the quality that they did. Terrific job. I was also equally proud of, of Miss Kafaji, who is our Director of, of Performing Arts here, but is also the Chair of the GPS Committee to see her speaking in that environment, representing the college, but also doing the work that she did throughout the day and the acknowledge from GPS for her contribution uh, is one that is absolutely exemplary. So I thank Miss Kafaji, but also those boys, but typical of Nudgee, we had boys perform here, but we also had the workers who were there in between the acts, the boys who were there at the end of the show. No other GPS school had young men in the stage crew doing the hard work that it took to set it up and to pull it down at the end. So those boys who also contributed, I thank you and acknowledge your contribution. Likewise, on Friday night in debating, credit to the debaters, even though we lost to Terrace, I want to acknowledge those boys who were there. I don't know what the numbers were, but it was an outstanding numbers of boys, nearly filled Tierney Hall. We certainly did bring the grandstand into Tierney to support debating. The way you boys conducted yourselves, held yourselves together, followed the decorum of debating and recognised both Gregory Terrace and the result, which was a disappointing one, but also recognised our boys, was exactly what we want when we talk about nudgy spirits. So good job to the guys who were there on Friday night. Equally on Saturday, the numbers were boy there to support our volleyballers the way you presented yourselves, the way you cheered and supported positively on our side of the court and that outstanding team that we have there. But your support, your presence, your voice was, was commented to me by numerous parents and old boys who'd come back. It was terrific to see at a Saturday afternoon volleyball game. So all of those things, boys, I think it echoes the message that, you, that Jacob gave us a couple of weeks ago about living the spirit. Terrific. Perhaps there's areas of improvement. And it connects a little bit to what Mr Canellan said today, boys. So for all that and being proud about Nudgee, I'm also going to face a meeting with Mr Canellan where I'm not going to be proud of Nudgee. 
he and I have a meeting with some parents who are absolutely irate about their son being bullied at this school about that boy, almost the complete opposite of the boy feeling safe at that school that Mr Canellan talked about because of the behaviours of other boys who made him a target. Now those boys are now being suspended and you will be as well boys if that's going to be your course of action. That's not what we want. You can recall one of my messages for this year was to be kind, to be focused, to be resilient, to be kind. Every one of you has a right, as Sir said, to come to school to be happy and to enjoy the experience of being here as Nudgy, which I think is the, the overwhelming experience for most of us every day. But it's not the universal one. And it's an area that we need to improve. It's an area we need to be better. And I hope that's the case in the week ahead, boys. And another area, I guess, I don't often talk about what happens on the sports field on Saturdays. But today I will. I went out to Tennyson yeah, Saturday morning, I got there pretty early to be fair, the early rounds of cricket and on two separate fields there were two nudgy teams in the first hour of their cricket game against Terrace two teams were both five down, so five wickets out for less than 20 runs not good start to Saturday morning, you'd have to say. It was really interesting to see what happened next one team found some resilience amongst a couple of boys and showed their resilience as a group and they struggled and they scrapped and they got to 190 and they struggled with Terrace who were a pretty handy side as well and ultimately they won the game. The other team, were, the, the other team I'm referring to were out for 42. They were home for morning tea. No resilience, no fight. I don't want to critique boys and situations are different, but there's something in those two teams, almost side by side, games side by side. And we can all be like that, boys. In certain situations, we find what's required and we can be resilient and dig deep. But other times we don't, either as individuals or as collective groups or as teams. So the message is one about be resilient. Disappointments are going to come. We're now into week four and heading into midterm of the year. And as you face some of those challenges and, and, and disappointments that are going to come during the year, the question is, how do you respond? Do you step up, seek the support of others, your parents, your mates, teachers, find something in yourself, learn something about yourself to be resilient, learn that, or do we step back, do we give in too quickly? Do we not show those characteristics that we would hope as young people to be? So something for us to work on. So boys, over the past week, but more importantly, we can do little about what's happened, but we can do something about today and tomorrow and the week ahead. Let's think about where can I be that kind of face of Nudgy College? Think about where do I need to be more resilient in my schoolwork, my home life, whatever part, aspects of life where you're having a bit of a struggle. Boys, we're here to help. We're here to work with you. We're here to make sure we all enjoy the journey of being a nudgy man. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Fulliger, CLT staff, parents, and of course, my fellow Nudgy brothers. Last week, Ethan spoke to us about Terrace Round and the meaningful history behind, and he left us with a call to action. On Saturday, we answered that call, and we outnumbered Terrace at debating, cricket, and volleyball. Your support brought our boys in volleyball and cricket across the line and pulled our, our debaters to a tantalizingly close debate with Terrace only just beating us. I also want to credit you boys for something truly special, slowing the war cry down. We haven't heard a war cry like this in many years, and all the credit goes to you by having to truly live the spirit. We have set the standard for a great year ahead, and I look forward to sharing many more wins with you boys over the remainder of the year. Boys' happiness is a tricky concept. Sometimes it seems to us like the Holy Grail, mythical, wonderful and sometimes something that we all desire to have but we don't always do however positive psychology suggests that happiness is easy to achieve it is the result 
It is the natural result of building up our well-being and satisfaction with ourselves. Here at Nudgee College, we want boys to be able to flourish in all aspects of their life. Over the past few weeks, my fellow community and well-being prefects, Ned and Shane, have introduced to you the concept of PERMA. And today, I will focus on the second letter, engagement. Positive engagement is a concept that describes the emotions we feel when we focus on the things that we truly enjoy and care about. We can begin to engage completely with the pre present and enter the state of being, known as the flow. Many athletes, musicians, performing artists talk about this concept of finding their flow, where they are truly focused and find inner peace. Time almost stops. So how could you do this? On the screen behind me are some simple actions that young people can do each day to develop positive emotions. So what are the key ingredients for creating this flow? It could be playing music, dancing, painting, drawing, reading, fitness activities, writing, surfing, or building things. The important part is finding your key ingredient. Be open to new ideas. Try something new, as you'll never know unless you take the plunge. To be truly engaged and in the mental state of being completely absorbed, there are a few secrets. First, it needs to be something to strive for, providing you a small yet achievable challenge. Secondly, you need to minimize the distractions around you as we all continue to grow and mature, I hope that you make the time to engage in an activity that brings you pure joy and happiness. Now let's look at the week ahead. Year sevens from Barrett, McGee, McKenna, Riley and Tierney, they'll head out to camp on Wednesday, thanks to the house deans and core teachers for going with them. Um, Thursday, Fogarty House Breakfast and Tierney Auditorium, and then Ross House Breakfast will be down at the McHenry Centre. For SF on Friday morning, year eight will be in Tierney and everyone else will be in their SF classrooms. On Friday night, our swimmers will travel to Chandler for the GPS lead up meet and our GPS debaters will take on state high in round four. On Saturday morning, GPS rowing, they have a bye week and cricket and volleyball, both away games at state high and I hope to see as many of you out there. Thank you and have a good week. Thanks, Eamon. Well done. Gents, as promised, uh, we're going to finish with the presentation of the Interhouse Swimming Trophy. So if I could ask Mr Fulliger and our prefects to come forward. Don't drop it. All right, thanks, gents. For those that haven't seen this before, we call this our Interhouse Walk of Shame. So we start from ninth place, and as your house name is called out, those prefects uh, take their seats. All right, so I think we're ready to go. In ninth place, Riley House. In eighth, McKenna House. Seventh, Tinney. Sixth, Shaw House. Fifth place, a shout out to the boys in Tinney Auditorium, Ross. Fourth place is Barrett. Now, I don't think I've seen this in my time, but there's a tie for second. So they, the two houses that tied for second are Fogarty House and McGee House.
And of course, that leaves us with our 2023 in-house swimming winners, Doug and House. Apparently three in a row to Duggan, well done. Well done. Three peep. <laughs> three peep. All right, thanks ladies and gentlemen. It's been a wonderful celebration of our community this morning. Can I thank all those involved in, uh, in the uh, behind the scenes, but also to the wonderful men that have graced our stage today. Well done to all of those. Um, I'd now ask our parents if you would like to leave first, please. Oh, of course. Sorry, parents. Stay there. Nearly forgot. Three cheers. Thank you, sir. Um, our three cheers today is by college senior Paul McIver. Thanks, Paul. Done. Thanks, Paul. All right, thanks, parents. You may leave first. All right, gents, we are moving straight to period two, please. If you are in year 10, we're packing up all the chairs this week on this side. Off you go.